Many games are cancelled during development, but it's much less common that a fully finished game would never see the light of day. That's the case here, but has it been worth the almost 30 years wait? I'm Kutsky, and this is my review of Clockwork Aquario for Nintendo Switch. Get ready! Clockwork Aquario was developed to completion in 1994, however due to the rise of popularity of 3D gaming in the arcades by the mid-90s, the game was cancelled. It sat in limbo until publisher In-In Games picked up the rights, restored the lost code and finally released the game on Nintendo Switch and PS4. Clockwork Aquario is a two-player side-scrolling platform game with big and colourful sprite-based graphics. The story is the classic evil doctors trying to take over the world and it's up to our trio of playable heroes to save the day. The game has simple to grasp mechanics, jump or melee attack your enemies to stun them, pick them up and throw them to chain together attacks for power-ups and the all-important arcade high score. The gameplay isn't revolutionary, but it's fun and addictive to play. The game's short with only five levels, each ending with a boss battle, and can be beat from beginning to end in about 25 minutes, but bearing in mind this was supposed to be an arcade game any longer, and I think it would have started to feel a bit repetitive. The additional features on this release are very cool though. My problem with home ports of arcade games is obviously I want unlimited credits to be able to finish those money hungry games that I loved as a kid. But as soon as you have unlimited credits, it almost stops me trying to be competent at the game and I just brute force my way through it, taking away any enjoyment for actually getting good at the game. Clockwork Aquario of course has the unlimited credit arcade experience, but in addition it has easy, normal and hard modes where you have to complete the game with 9, 5 and 3 credits respectively. Completing any of these versions, including the truncated training mode, unlocks the arcade mode. And the arcade mode has a super cool feature where you can access the arcade machine's service mode to poke around in the settings that the arcade owner would have had access to if this game would have ever actually been released. This includes pretty redundant options like memory tests, system displays, bookkeeping records and some more useful ones such as changing the dip switch settings to change the game parameters. As someone who grew up infatuated with arcade cabinets, this was a very much appreciated detail. It saddens me that such a cool game like this never got released despite being completed. I think its sprite-based pixel art and chiptune-esque soundtrack have aged much better than some of the ugly early 3D games that caused its cancellation. But thinking about the arcade games that I was obsessed with as a 10 year old at the time, it was games like Virtual Cop, Sega Rally, Ridge Racer, so it was probably a difficult but smart move by the original publisher Sega. And all's well that ends well, now the game has finally been released and can be fully appreciated for what it was. A solid playing, beautiful looking, fun, multiplayer platform game that's well worth checking out for any fans of the genre. Hope you've enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If so, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with new videos. And let me know in the comments what arcade games you were playing back in the 90s. And if you weren't born back in the 90s, feel free to let me know that in the comments as well so I can feel old. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Kutsky signing out, keeping the games alive. Yeah.